All right, so here's the first few digits of the continued fraction expansion of pi. So this means pi is equal to 3 plus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 292 plus dot dot dot. So this is the continued fraction expansion for pi. If you want to find a rational approximation to pi, just take finally many digits of its continued fraction expansion. The more digits you take, the better. And this is, in fact, how we find the best approximations. So what's the first approximation we would get to pi? Three. The next one would be three plus one over seven, which is? That's the famous 22 sevenths. This is where 22 sevenths comes from. It comes from the continued fraction expansion. The next one would be 3 plus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 15. All right, this is now a little bit more painful. 7 times 15 is 105. 106. So it's going to be... 3 plus 1 over 106 over 105. I have a feeling I've just made a mistake somewhere. Alright, so this is then the same as 105. No, over 15. Over 15. Over 15. Okay, good. There we go. There we go. That's better. Over 15. So this is then 3, oh, okay, no, sorry, okay, plus uh, 15 over 106. So this would then be 318, 1928, 333 over 106. I would use this specifically in my classroom going backwards to make them simplify the fraction. <laughs> It just goes on and on and on. But just yeah. like we simplify 3.14, can we say 333 over 106? I guess we use 22 over 7. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, just that makes sense. Right. Using fractions, use 22 sevens. Using decimals. Right. Sometimes they put on fours easier. Kids like to tell me that 22 sevens. The, the, the reason this was surprising me is the next digit after the 15 is a 1. So if we were to go one digit further, it would be 15 plus 1 over 1. So really, it's no more work to approximate it with 7 plus 1 16. I'm saying the next digit here is a 1. That's why I wasn't recognizing this expansion. Nobody ever stops it. They always just add the 1. So if we did the 16 over here, so we would have to add another 7. You're, like, you're skipping a step. So well, I'm saying, well, I'm, saying uh, I'm not going to stop over here because the next one is just a plus 1. I might as well just go one step further. And then that will get us the, I think, 330, the 355 over 113 that we had before. That does an even better job. Oh, so, okay. So every time you take another digit, you get a much better approximation. And in fact, if you notice, there's a huge number here, 292. What that means is if you stop right after there, it's an incredibly accurate approximation to pi. So if you go down to that file and just unwind what fraction you get, it's phenomenally accurate. Because the little decimal gets smaller and smaller. Right, because 292 is such a huge number that in fact, so sorry, in fact, stopping, I'm sorry, stopping right over here is really good because the next thing we're adding is 1 over 292. That's adding a very small amount. That's why when we do one more step here, uh, 7 times 6 would be 42, uh, 113. 113. 
But let's exactly what it should look like. So we have 113 over 16. The 16 would come up here. So they, you corrected yourself. You want to stop after the one because going into the next would gain you very, very little. Exactly. Right. Right. That makes sense. Right. So it would be 355, I think, if I've done everything correctly, over 113. And that was the approximation we had before. And so stopping here is a great place to stop because the next one is such a small correction. And that's why we were getting so many digits of accuracy. So the different numbers have different continued fraction expansions. Truncating the continued fractions give you rational approximations. The bigger your next number is, the more accurate you are. Okay? So because the 292 is such a large number, I'm really accurate if I stop here. Which number do you think is going to be the hardest to approximate? Which number is going to be the worst when you truncate? So I need... When you stop at the 15, if we did our math correctly, it's not a very good approximation at all. Well, what's it's that? Not, it's not hard. 3.233. But do one more after that and it gets even better. Right, one more after that is this one. Oh, uh, one. Yeah. But, but, but 22 over 7 is better. 22 over 7 is better than the... Wait, was 22 over 7 better? Yeah. Okay. What is the one between 22 over 7 and 355 over 3.13? What was that one? 333 over 106. Why would that... See, that doesn't make, that doesn't make sense, though. That it's good, good, bad, good. Uh, no, it, it does because you can be overshooting and undershooting. You can be approximating to something from above and below. So if you look at the Fibonacci numbers and ratios to like, if you look at the ratio of adjacent Fibonacci numbers, it, it converges to the golden mean. But the evens goes up and the odds go down or vice versa. So that's why for what you have, the 22 sevens could actually be better than the next one. So it's not as if every number, like after every comma, Gets getting better. you like one more decimal point to the right. Like that's not necessarily what it's but, doing. But sometimes it gets you many more decimal points. And right. so in fact over here we got many more decimal points. But when you go from the 1 to the 292, like is it even taking you further to the right? Like towards, do you know what I mean? Like within the decimals? Um, I mean if you add the 292, it'll, I believe it'll be a, it might be a little bit more accurate. Yeah. But there's always the, unfortunately, the issues of looking at an even number of terms versus an odd number of terms. And sometimes, I think what happens is, if you go from the evens, it's converging up to your number. If you go from the odds, it's converging down to your number. And so, really, to be safe, you should compare every two. Okay. But so, the reason that, you know, truncating here and 355 over 113 is such a good approximation is 292 is a very large number. The larger my number is, the better the truncation right before it is. So, can you give me a number where the truncations will be as bad as possible. What's the worst possible number to work with? So the larger these numbers, the better my truncations are. Can you give me a number where when yes. I cut small truncations? Yes. So what's the number that would have the worst possible truncation? The golden ratio. The golden ratio. And in some sense, this is why the golden ratio is the most irrational and the hardest to approximate. When you look at one plus root five Oh, well, it's called five. One plus root five over two. One, 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 one. When you truncate, it's as bad as possible. All the numbers from that point on are as little as possible. So the mistake you make is as great as possible. This is why, in some sense, the golden mean is the hardest one to approximate with rational numbers. The bigger the digits in the continued fraction expansion, the easier it is to approximate. And so, you had asked a question about the square root of 2. So, so the silver ratio, and you can, you can look up what the silver ratio is. So, let's say x equals 1 plus the square root of 2. Okay. So, this number is going to be a little bit more than 2. And so the question is, you know, how do I write down a nice equation of this sort? Um, there's lots of ways to do this. I'm going to just guess in the interest of time, x equals 2 plus 1 over...
So let's look at this number. And so if I look at this number, I get x equals 2 plus 1 over x. So I get x squared equals 2x plus 1, x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root, but we know we're not going to have the negative sign, b squared minus 4ac becomes plus 4 all over 2. Can I ask you just a yep. question? Yep. The minus, why are we well, if I put in a minus sign, I'm going to get a negative number. And we want to get a bigger... Well, I, mean, I, I, know, I, know, I know x is supposed to equal this positive number. So if you use this capacitor, you're going to get a negative number. Right. When you do algebra like this, you can always introduce phantom roots. So if I want to solve, as an aside, if I want to solve um, x equals negative 1, so one possibility is I could square both sides and get x squared equals 1. I can even do x, mi x squared minus 1 equals 0. I can factor that as x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0, and I can conclude that if x equals negative 1, the two solutions to that are x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Or clearly, if x equals negative 1, x does not equal 1. But what happens is when I square things, I introduce an extra root. When I multiply through by x here, I introduce a possible extra root. And so now when I get this, this is the square root of 8. The square root of 8 is 2 root 2. When I cancel the 2's, I get 1 plus the square root of 2. And so this is the silver ratio. And so you know, it's been a while since I've looked at the silver ratio. So Wikipedia says it's an irrational mathematical constant. Um, when does it get used? So well, that's what I'm looking at right now. Um, you you talk about Wikipedia a lot. Yeah. I thought it wasn't like the best thing to. If you want to do anything political, I would stay away from Wikipedia because it depends on the time of day. But, but I felt like anybody can post anything to Wikipedia. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, people could. I could go on there and start posting anything like that. Somebody would fix it. And somebody would fix it. Yeah. So it's people amazing. Go in and, like, change the yeah. mathematics yeah. section is extremely posted. The other thing you should do is use their sources as resources. Why? Yes. Hmm? Use whatever sources they list as a source instead of using Wikipedia as a source. Take it down. Go to that source. Who took it down? People like sit and look for. Stuff on it. Or just when people are going to a page they need, they'll find something and they'll fix it. And so Wikipedia math is very good. And I have no problems giving my students links to Wikipedia math. I would but not... But you could look at something one minute and it could be changed. To it could, and that's one of the difficulties in terms of when you do references. Do you put a reference to Wikipedia? And I'm always torn because I, I try to put references to Wikipedia because it's a real aid to me when I'm looking things up. But at the advanced level, if they're following through the math, yeah. Hopefully they'll find one of those errors. Well, when I was writing a um, textbook in number theory, I found a proof online of the transcendence of pop. You know, it's a certain type of irrationality. And on that same page, I also found a proof of Fermat's last name in four pages. And so the proof of Fermat's last name was wrong, but I could check the argument they were giving for the transcendence of pi. It was the standard argument that was correct. And so at some point, you can't be the mindless you know, robot following these things. But in terms of trying to see how irrational numbers are, if you have all ones from some point onward, um, you're the golden mean, or you're a simple tweak of the golden mean. You could also do like 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, or 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. You could do stuff like that. So would the one you just did be 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2? Yep, it would just be all twos. Or well, start with a 1. And no, starting with a 2, because the square root of 2 is about 1.4. And because and that's why we add the ones are bigger two. than ones, yeah. it makes that uh, one less. So this one is actually easier to approximate with rushes. When you truncate it, it's a little bit better because the numbers are larger. Uh, but only by a little bit. Twice larger than one, bit. right? So is there a bronze ratio that's three, 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 three? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Wait, did it say where the silver ratio gets to? Could we work backwards and figure out what it is or not? I, I don't see anything listed as one, but you could definitely create the bronze ratio. Oh, wait, in mathematics, the, the term bronze ratio, I told you, this could does say something about bronze. Oh, it, I used to name the subsequent silver means. 
and so it's looking at the equations x squared minus nx. So, okay, so I guess Vaughn's ratio is the next one. And you can go all the way down to 10 and then eventually the uranium ratio. So what does the Vaughn's ratio look like? 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. But what does it look like? See how, like, the silver one is 1 plus square root of 2, right? Right. So what was the... So all that would change is this 2 would become a 3. So this 2 would become a 3. So this 2 would become a 3. So this would become a 3. And now you would have 9 squared. You would have, I'm um, sorry, 3 squared is 9 plus 4 over 2. So it would be 3 plus square root of 13 over 2. Yes. And so you can now calculate all the different ratios. And so you can just replace the 3s with the 4s, and so on and so on. And then the question is, can you put any integer in here such that this becomes a perfect square? So if you put in, for instance, 12, Oh, so no. Um, so here, yeah, so, so here's the question. Is there what anything you can put in here such that it's square plus four is another square? Zero. Zero works. And that's the only thing that will work. So then what would you can't do that. You can't do that. So none of which which it shouldn't happen because all of these are infinite continuous fraction expansions. So this is probably the longest proof that you want to solve a squared equals b squared plus four. A has to be zero. The only way you can solve that is if A equals zero. Otherwise, I would put in that special number B over here. Our oh, threes become these very nice. And then if that was a perfect, if B squared plus four was a square, then this whole thing would be a, the square root of a square would be an integer, and I'd have a, a rational number. A rational number has a finite continued fraction expansion. This is probably the most painful proof that you can't solve a squared equals b squared plus 4. Right. But if it, you know, it would violate the fact that the only continued fractions that are finite are the rational numbers. And so this becomes a really good way to analyze you know, structures of numbers. And so in a lot of the work I do, maybe we'll make this the last topic, you know, I do work on Benefit's Law of Digit Bias. How many of you have heard of Benefit's Law of Digit Bias? So, let's take the Fibonacci numbers, and let's say you have to go to a school committee meeting you know, later, and for once you actually get bored. So you start writing down, <laughs> just you know, it could happen. And so you decide to start recording how many of the Fibonacci numbers start with the first digit of 1, how many start with the first digit of 2, how many start with the first digit of 3. If you had to guess, what fraction of the time do you think a Fibonacci number starts with a 1? Just, what do you think the most reasonable answer is? I don't care if it's right, I just think, well, what's the most reasonable thing to do? 1 tenth. One tenth. Then you realize you're being a moron and it can't be 1 tenth. Why 1 tenth? Can't start with 0. Can't start with 0. 1 ninth. So you, so you correct from 1 tenth to 1 ninth. The actual answer is about 30%. Technically, it's the log base 10 of 2. Of course. So you know, we'll end the day with the exponential. So the question is, why do the Fibonacci numbers exhibit this bias? Why do they have so many more 1s as their leading digit? Let's look at powers of 2. Um, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, dot, 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 dot. What you can notice here is I'm deliberately writing them in sets of 10. When I go from here to here, I've almost padded my number by three zeros, but not quite. And so if you talk to a computer scientist, they know that you know, a gigabyte is not a thousand megabytes. Right. You know, if you understand classic languages, then they should differ by a thousand. But in computer science, we work base 2. And the fact is that um, 1,000 is almost <coughs> um, 1024. I've got the slides, and I can show this much faster than just doing it.